Do you remember playing uh, cops and robbers as a kid? And you, the kids would split up. You'd have the good guys and the bad guys, and the good guys were the cops. I mean, kids actually wanted to be the cops because, I mean, who doesn't want to be the good guy, right? Every 28 hours, a black person in the United States is killed by a police officer or a vigilante, and 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 that is really scary to me. I just saw this clip that Melissa Harris Perry did where she was talking about all the black and unarmed men who've been killed just in the past decade. And it was heartbreaking because the names just kept coming. But let's talk about Mike Brown. So uh, on August 9th, uh, 18 years old, Mike Brown was jaywalking with his friend and uh, the police rolled up. There was some sort of confrontation and the police fired two shots from the car and then followed it up with four more shots, one of them actually being in Mike Brown's head, even though he put up his hands and said, don't shoot, I'm, I'm unarmed. They leave his body in the street for hours uh, and they don't call the paramedics, they call for police backup and then they end up putting his body in the back of a police SUV, like not even an ambulance, uh, like they couldn't even respect his body in death. Yes, there were some people that looted, but the majority of the protests in Ferguson following Mike's death were actually peaceful. But of course the police showed up and escalated the situation by bringing tanks and SWAT gear and tear gassing unarmed residents and shooting rubber bullets at them. Now isn't this the police state and martial law that the Tea Party is so passionately against? Because ever since stuff started going down in Ferguson, they have been eerily quiet. Oh wait, black people, I'm sorry. That was a really stupid question. What about Darren Wilson, the cop who shot Mike Brown? Well, he's still on paid leave because you get paid vacation when you shoot and kill an unarmed person. Now, the police have tried to suggest that Mike stole a box of cigar wraps from a convenience store. There's like the surveillance video, it's grainy, I don't know, it could be him. I don't really know, but what I do know is that we don't execute people for shoplifting. That's not what we do. And now, of course, Mike Brown is essentially being put on trial for his own murder while Darren Wilson reads his nook by a pool somewhere. I don't care that he might have stolen some cigar papers or if there was weed in his system or even that he was headed to college next week. Honestly, it's heartbreaking that he was going off to school, but he could have had plans to sit in his boxers and play Xbox for the rest of his life. But he didn't deserve to die because his life mattered. And I'm pretty sure that someone's gonna accuse me of playing the race card because it happens every single time I talk about race and oppression and privilege on the internet and in real life as if this is some fun game of like Uno or something. Look, protest and signing petitions and marches and crying is not fun. This is not a fun experience. So if you wanna accuse me of playing the race card, then let's all agree that white privilege is the ultimate royal flush. And, and you know what, there's proof, because the Huffington Post just did this article called When the Media Treats White Suspects and Killers Better Than Black Victims, which also could have been titled Days of the Week That End in Y. You know, he was a brilliant, but he was a social misfit. He was a soft-spoken, polite gentleman. I mean, that James Holmes guy killed 12 people in a movie theater, and not only did they walk him out in handcuffs, they talked about him being a good kid and how nice his family was. They ran his senior photo. But that's not what happens when the victim is black. He was maybe a gang member. He was suspended from school. He had drug abuse in the past and tangled with the law. And of course, they're going to find the worst photo of you possible to make you look like somebody threatening and scary, which is why someone started the if they gun me down hashtag on Twitter to expose how blatantly racist the media's portrayal of black people really is. There needs to be consequences when police use excessive force and when they kill people, they should go to prison, not on paid vacation. I saw this thing on Tumblr where a city in California is requiring all their police to wear a body camera and police aggression and complaints have plummeted. There is now a petition on whitehouse.gov that would require local and state police to wear 
body cameras and once it reaches 100,000 signature, it goes to the present. I signed it. I want you to sign it. I want you to share it because I don't want to be afraid of the police. As always, there are links in the video description box to the stories that I've talked about in addition to the whitehouse.gov petition. I also have some links to some photographers that were kind enough to give me permission to use their photos in this video, so please check them out. Subscribe if you want. I don't know when I'll be back. So, uh, hmm, yes, I will see you when I see you. Bye.